I think it was 1991, I was at the Paris Jazz Festival, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Marion McKeeba and Dizzy Gillespie were going to perform. Wow. So mm -hmm. we went out there, and I stood at the, we were talking about show and respect, so I stood at the, you know, where the, where the security guard was, and I had a piece of paper, or I had the, the program from, from the event, and I said, could I send this back to maybe get uh, Dizzy Gillespie's autograph? And the security guy, because I spoke English and the people back in the tent were speaking English, he goes, why don't you go back and get it yourself? So I walked right. back and uh, wound up sitting down and being welcomed because uh, his people are from North Hollywood and I know some people mm -hmm. who knew people. And I wound up uh, personally pouring Dizzy Gillespie a half bottle of red wine wow, before nice. he went on. <laughs> and what's very funny is on stage you'd see Dizzy Gillespie and Miriam McKeeba and they'd banter and they'd be, you know, chummy, you know, personal mm -hmm. banter back and forth. Before the show and after the show, they didn't, they weren't anywhere near each other. They got together, they did their thing, and then they went their separate ways. But uh, this is Mary McKeeba and then, then Dizzy Gillespie, and then I was a year or two later, I'm not sure exactly when he passed away. I had a, a, a French friend, uh, Hervé, who shot the picture of me with uh, Dizzy. In addition to getting what you mentioned about having autographs to kind of prove you met them, I have a wall that we'll probably look at later of photo ops, whether it's with uh, Evil Knievel or Ronald Reagan or uh, Charlton Heston. I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to have your picture taken with them, too, although sometimes Absolutely. they age better than you do. <laughs> That's true. That's a super piece, especially to me because I was a trumpet player. Okay. So uh, when I originally started my collection, I was starting with all the different trumpet players. And that was a hassle in New York because getting to these various places where they were were expensive for a poor boy, which is what I was back then. But uh, it was great meeting them and, you know, chatting with them. And uh, uh, but that developed. And uh, in California, I came out here in 1960, and I uh, subsequently joined most of the organizations: AFI, SAG, um, uh, uh, and ultimately the Motion Picture Council. And as a member of the council, I would meet many, many celebrities and always ask for an autograph. What I have found in, in collecting autographs, whether it was Jimmy Durante or spending the evening with uh, Barry Maguire who sang Eve of Destruction, mm -hmm. wound up I was taking livestock in the 4-H and FFA to the Del Mar Fair. And you'd wind up hanging out there and then you'd see Andy Williams doing a show and get his autograph and then we'd all go over to the mm -hmm. beach and have a barbecue. And it was like all of a sudden you were accepted as part of the, not the entourage, group? but the group. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and it was back when autograph collecting was a fan showing respect and wanting an autograph, where today it seems to have turned more into a very commercial yes, business. Yes, very definitely.